It's been a while since I've seen an Indian movie in theaters, but finally, somewhere, somewhat close, PS2 was out. Not PlayStation 2, I promise you. Chase Lee Hockey here at the Blue Futon. Because I'm a silly Westerner, I am not going to try to say this name, even though it doesn't seem that hard. But you know what? PS2 is just so much nicer and rolls off the tongue more. So what is PS2 about? It's a pretty simple premise, you could say it. This is basically right after PS1. We are in 983 AD, if I'm not mistaken. And you know what? Is war going to happen? You have so many factions in this part of India right now. You know, we have this faction in the forest. This faction, like, kind of in a castle. This faction on the water. This faction right here. What's with the girl with the long gray hair? We are all, we are going to find this all out together when watching this. So, do I like this film? When comparing this to the first one, it feels like almost a little bit of a different movie and different tone. I remember the first one being a little bit more like Prince of Persia-esque. This one feels a little bit more grand. Yes, there are some Prince of Persia-esque, you know, style of fine and humor. But the second one has a lot less humor than the first one. And it takes itself a little bit more serious with the final battle sequence, which is pretty cool. But I wish it was a little bit longer. So let's talk about the positives of this film first. I think the look of the film is fantastic. The practical effects are fantastic. You could tell this was not a sound stage. Yeah, of course, there might be some sound stages here and there, especially in the final battle sequence. But majority of it, you're seeing the lush environment. And if you know me, I'm a sucker for doing a mix of sound stage and, you know, practical effects in the outside world. Like Ant-Man, Quantumanium, I did not like that movie whatsoever because it's that whole sound stage where you know the whole thing is fake. Here, it feels like they're in the water. It feels like they're in the forest. It feels like they're actually in this castle or in this fortress. And I totally dig that style of filmmaking. And the look of the film, not just the whole production design, the costumes, the grand scale of things. Completely enjoyed how it looked and I loved it. Then the acting. I think the acting is a step up from the first one. You have the original characters coming back, some dying, some doing more crisscrossing or double stabbing with other people. So I completely enjoy that aspect. And I do think the story itself is less convoluted than the first one. Because I understand the first one, you're trying to introduce everyone. And it can get kind of confusing of like, okay, they're teaming up with this people. But they're only going to team up if they cannot kill these type of people. And these people will team up, doesn't matter who. So it was very convoluted here. It was a little less convoluted with me understanding, okay, okay. Yellow flags are going for these people. Red flags are with these people. Forest people are going with these people because of X, Y, Z. And it does explain it in the story. And so I'm okay, now I kind of understand who these people are and where they're going to follow and where they're going to follow suit with. So then that leads to kind of where I was just kind of underwhelmed with the story because it just felt like even though you have all these characters, it felt like not all the characters had the fate they needed or... I just want a little bit more brutality, if you mean that way. So, it ends with a girl with gray hair. And it felt like they could have added a little bit more of her storyline. But she's literally only in this movie for maybe 10 minutes. You understand her backstory and who she is. But I wish there's a little bit more fleshed outness for that character. And also, the other character from the first movie, the main girl, who is kind of plotting everything and being a badass. Here, they took the badass of her away. And her story arc and how it ended, I'm going to say it ended with water. I was very disappointed with that story arc. Because I understand what you're going for in the backstory of her character and being an orphan. And they did do a little bit of it in the first act of this movie. Like the first 15 minutes was a flashback of her and another character. And it kind of, you know, that storyline ends. But how it ends, I was just like, eh. It left me wanting more with what I saw in PS1. So her storyline wasn't the greatest, in my opinion, on how they decided to end it. But everyone else's storyline, they fleshed it out, made it more serious, and made it more grand spectacle. And so when we get to the final battle sequence, when we talk about battle sequences, there wasn't a lot in this movie. There was, I would say, three or four max in this two-hour and 45-minute movie. And speaking about the battle sequences, like I said, there would be like some Prince of Persia PG-13-esque style of things. Then all of a sudden, there'll be like a, elephant swinging a person through a damn bamboo stick you're just like yeah that went there or you know just normal fighting all of a sudden bam neck slash bam legs coming off bam arms coming off and then the next scene is more of like 
oh, arm cut, arm cut. So you're like, well, this tonal shift of what you want to show is just like, eh. Because I'm hearing that the Ridley Scott new Napoleon movie with Joaquin Phoenix is brutal to a freaking max. So I do wish movies like this have a little bit more of the grander scale. Because I didn't know if it wanted to be a PG-13 style movie or wanted that R-rated like graphicness of it. Because there was some moments where you're just like, yeah, that guy just got both his legs, I mean, one, both his arms chopped off and one of his legs. So you're like, what are we going here? And the final battle sequence was fun. And it, it was fun. But it just left me wanting more. Like, the whole movie was, you know, it was leading up to this big battle sequence. And when it came, and when it was done, and when it was conquered, you're just like, ugh. Because I know it's a completely different movie, but KGF 2, that last battle sequence went on forever. Because you knew for a fact it had to go on forever. Because it was a wham, bam, 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 bam. And they had to get all the character arcs involved. Here, it was like, okay, it's cool. But it left me just a little more empty than I think it wanted it to. So overall, if I'm thinking about PS1 and PS2, which one's a better film? I'd say they're about the same. I could say the second one was tonally better and just felt more like a complete movie. So if I had to go with one or the other, I think two is a little bit better than the first one. But overall, it is a fun experience, even though it did leave me just a little bit, you know, a little empty of like, give me more meat. Or not even meat. There's plenty of meat. Just a little bit more muscle. I think a little bit more muscle to that meat. A little bit more leaner. Make it more lean meat, please. So PS2 will receive a 3.5 out of 5 with food times. It goes at 70%. We'll see the Critics News course gave this one. So you have Critics, 2 of them. Audience score an 86% with plus 50. And the Critics are 1 negative, 1 positive. We have Jimmy Cage. He's that big YouTuber that everyone says like he does this too. He gave it a 5 out of 10. Then we have RogerEber.com giving it a 3 out of 4, which is 75%. So even though that's a 50%, if you combine them both, 75 plus 50, you know, that's 125. Divide that by 2, you're in the eh, 15, 15. You're in about the 62, 62.5% range. So it's still a positive. So we'll give it that. We'll give it a 62%, my 70 and 86. Chase Hawk with the Blue Food Tunnel. Like, comment, subscribe. Let me know things. Boop Tom Topi. Boop Tom. Thank you. Watch a great day. And which one do you think is better? Do you think the first one or second one is better? Me, personally, the second one, I think, not by a hair, I think a good amount because it totally knew what it really wanted to be. And what is the next big Indian movie coming out worldwide? Let me know. Because I, I think I need to watch Three Amigos now. I think that is finally on Netflix or YouTube, if I'm not mistaken. That was called Amigos. I think so.